Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Hope you like my haircut. Just got a fresh cut yesterday. Feels amazing. I'm out here in Arizona. It's boiling hot. So it's quite necessary if you ask me. Anyways, this was a requested video. So I would like to cover this. I like this type of question because I don't even need a calculator. Here are the details. So as usual, read the question five to a hundred times and write down the following. We are given that a loan amount um, is designated by the letter A. So A represents my loan and we have N payments, which I've written here, as well as giving you a time diagram going up to N. Think of it as years or whatever pay period you want to think of. Um, P, now be careful here, this is always, this is why you read a question five to hundred times because P actually is the present value of the principal portion of the payments. So remember, uh, we're amortizing a loan which means each payment I make towards, well, each payment, each loan payment I make has a portion which is the principal as well as a portion which is the interest, right? So. Maybe I'll tag up above, take a look at the card up above, which gives you um, reference to another video of mine talking about amortizing a loan. All right, uh, we're looking for actually an expression for an increasing annuity immediate. I want to know what is an expression for this quantity here. So what I'm going to do actually, um, well, let's first write down the loan, the loan amount. Uh, this shouldn't be um, too confusing, I hope. Uh, each payment I'm making uh, is one. So I'm only paying back one each time, which means A, maybe I'll just write it over here. Uh, the first thing I have is that the loan amount A is equal to just A angle N. I'll omit the interest rate I. I don't really care. Uh, I is the effective rate. the effective rate of interest. This is my loan amount. Go through, I mean, it's not confusing as to why this is the loan amount. So A, the loan amount is just A angle N. Payments are one, no big deal. All right, uh, this is the more confusing part. And let me just emphasize, we need that, okay? <clears throat> and then what about the present value of the principal portions? So what I'm going to do actually, is I'm going to write up here these are going to be uh, my principal portions, principal portions. Now, let me write down, again, I refer you to the amortization formula video I made. Let me write down, um, in general, what is the principal portion uh, of an annuity, of an amortization? Loan, amortizing loan, okay? So what is, usually this is denoted by P sub T. So P sub T is equal to um, the principal portion of the T payment. Okay, so the principal portion of the T payment. So of course, T is less than N and greater than zero. All we're saying here is for each, <clears throat> any given period, I make that payment of one, how much of it is actually paying towards the outstanding balance? Uh, this is equal to, and again, refer you to my video on amortization formulas. This is equal to the discount factor raised to the number of payments I make uh, minus that year plus one. So this is just the formula. I've got made a video going through why that is the way it is. And I'm just going to apply that here. Um, since these are my principal portions, which I want to label here, what is the, what happens when T is one, right? These are my values of T. T equals one, T equals two, etc. What happens if uh, T is one? So four, T equals one, uh, in other words, P1 is equal to V to the N. What about T equals two? P1 
is equal to v to the n minus 1, etc. So hopefully you see what I'm doing here. I'm just applying this formula uh, to find the principal portions for each period. And I'm going to label these up here. So what I have now uh, is the following. The principal portion in year 1 is v to the n. That's how much of my payment of a dollar, that's how much, actu how much actually goes towards the principal. Uh, in year 2, it's v to the n minus 1. That's what I got right here. And then this will be v to the n minus 2. And actually, um, principal portions follow uh, a geometric progression. And you can see that because, well, multiply by 1 plus i, multiply by 1 plus i. So these form a geometric sequence. Well, or series, depending on how you think about it. I want to go all the way up to here. This will be v squared v. So these are all of my principal portions. These are not my payments. These are not my uh, periodic payments. So be careful. Um, I've labeled these as the principal portions. Now, I'm after what is p. I want to know, I want an expression for P. So let me now write this down. I actually have everything I need. So let's go ahead and do that. To find P, uh, which is the present value of the principal portion of the payments, I just want to discount each of these back to time zero. Typical situation, I want the present value. If I want to discount all of these, that will give me P. So P is equal to, well if I discount v to the n, I need to multiply by v, so v times v to the n, plus this is going to be v squared times v to the n minus 1, plus v cubed times v to the n minus 2, and we're going to go all the way up to um, these last two here, right? So this is, if I want to discount this one, I need to go n minus 1 period. So v to the n minus 1, v squared, plus one more, v to the n times v. This gives me um, the present value of my principal portions. Let me just get rid of this for space. Okay, uh, we do need that though. So this is quite nice. Hopefully you notice what happens here. Um, each one of these is v to the n plus 1. So hopefully you can see uh, that this is v to the n plus 1. This is v to the n plus 1, etc. v to the n plus 1, all the way down here. Quite nice, quite nice, quite nice. That tells me that I have this situation for P, P is equal to V to the N plus 1 plus V to the N plus 1. How many of these V to the N plus 1's do I have? Well, I'm making N payments, or you could count them using a counting argument. So N times. Either way, I'm adding, and this is the proper way to think about this, I'm adding V to the N plus 1 to itself N times. Adding anything to itself n times will yield n times that thing, v to the n plus 1. So this is the expression I want to use. So I have this guy here, and then if you recall, I also have that my loan amount is equal to a angle n. I'm just omitting i uh, just for convenience. I'm absolutely ready to write down the expression for my increasing annuity immediate and, and that's actually the present value right so that's what I want so we can see now um, that the increasing annuity immediate with payments of one by definition this is equal to the uh, annuity due with uh, n payments minus n times v to the n all over my effective rate i let's do some manipulation with this um, if you recall uh, maybe I'll do a little recall over here, so recall uh, that I have these two things. Number one, I'm going to need both of these. Uh, a double dot angle n is equal to uh, 1 plus i a angle n. And then the other thing I'm going to need actually 
um, is that uh, d is equal to i over 1 plus i. Remember, d is the effective discount rate. All right. This looks, this looks good. This looks very good because um, this is equal to 1 plus i a angle n. I have an expression for a angle n. Remember that that's a. Okay, so this is, this is looking good. This is looking quite nice. Okay, and I have these two things. Uh, now, minus, I'm going to write something down for this. Uh, look at the distinguishment between n v to the n and n v to the n plus 1. This should be actually 1 plus i, uh, let's write it as, um, yeah, let's write it as n v to the n plus 1. So this is clear, this is obvious, this is obvious, divided by i. Okay, as usual, I ran out of room. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Let's just fit it over here. Let me just get rid of the expression for the effective discount rate. So, one more step and I have it actually. Um, if you factor out one plus i, we get the following. So I have, let me write it this way. This is one plus i, factor one plus i out of the numerator. Remember that this piece, a angle n, this is equal to a, and this is equal to p. So this is great. This is great stuff because this is a minus p divided by i, divided by i. But if you recall, the defective discount rate is i over 1 plus i. So the last step I can do is I can write the following somewhere where I ran out of room. Oh, it's always that last piece. Damn you. Damn you. Damn you. So let me just write the conclusion. I mean, we're done. We're done. You should be thinking to yourself, we are done because this right here is 1 over d. So in conclusion, in conclusion, we have the results. The results. So this is, this gives me the expression of the amount of the loan minus the present value of the principal portions divided by d. And that's my answer. Interesting stuff. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like the video and thank you for subscribing.